Despite slight differences between countries and regions, people have appreciated flowers and are being nurtured by the greenery in their cultures. And so, the flowers and greens evoked our sense of beauty and have always been objects of our aesthetics and passions. These vibrant paintings were painted about 100 years ago for a plant trade catalog. In other words, plants carried that much value. Like art and music, they were transported and spread across the world by people who recognized their value. The plants adapted to the local environment and bloomed in each of their ways. Since ancient times, Japan has been a rich habitat for a wide variety of plant species due to its extended north to south geography, undulating terrain, and climate that varies significantly depending on the region and season. Gifted with an environment of this kind, the people of Japan have long loved plants and cultivated a gardening culture. Over 1,200 years ago, bonsai, believed to have originated from China, was widely produced, refining Japanese style of aesthetics. During summers, commoners enjoyed competing in the beauty of blooming morning glories. Still, from 1639 to 1854, Japan adopted an isolationist policy that imposed strict regulations on foreign exchanges and trade. For that reason, very few foreigners knew about Japanese plants. Japan would eventually reverse its isolation policy. In 1859, Japan's plant trade launched from Yokohama with its open port to the world. This is the beginning of the story of the internationalization and modernization of Japanese horticulture set in Yokohama. Siebold, a German physician and botanist, was a resident of Nagasaki, the only open port during Japan's national isolation of the early 19th century. He brought a wealth of Japanese culture and art to Europe. He also succeeded in blooming Japanese lilies and other plants in Europe. This achievement was an epochal moment in the European botanical world. People were utterly fascinated by Japanese lilies, which showed more variety and elegance than their European counterparts. The trigger that disseminated Japanese plants to the world began with the ending of Japan's national isolation and the opening of its ports in 1859. Yokohama became the center stage with the opening of its port to the world. From 1887 to 1941, more than 90% of lily bulbs were exported from Yokohama. Let's hear from Mr. Masahiro Hirano, an expert on the history of Yokohama about the situation at that time. え、シーボルトが紹介した日本の豊かな植物は海溝とともに欧米から多くのプラントハンターを呼び寄せることになりました。そのうち最初に世界の樹木を集めたのはユリでした。横浜には百合の輸出をする外国商館が数多く生まれ
The port of Yokohama, which started trading from its opening, was home to foreign trading posts dealing in lily bulbs and was the center of Japan's plant trade until 1941. These plates were drawn for a catalog produced for export purposes by a plant trading company called the Yokohama Nursery. Professional painters were hired at the time. Over time, lilies were designated by the government as one of Japan's major foreign trade goods, and by 1937, more than 40 million were exported. The flower trade contributed greatly to the economy of the country. Of course, there were not only plants sent out from Japan to Europe and America, but also a variety of plants were brought into Japan. Roses were one of them. There were native roses in Japan, but the Western roses, which were rich in variety and produced by repeated selective breeding, has captured the hearts of Japanese people and have become one of the most popular flowers in Japan. These illustrations were published in catalogs for Japan's domestic market. With the existence of a foreign settlement in Yokohama, the city became a gateway for the spread of Western roses in Japan. And in 1931, as a symbol of Yokohama's Love City movement, rose seedlings were distributed to citizens at a low price, and rose cultivation gradually spread among its citizens. In 1989, Yokohama instituted the rose as its city flower. While Western roses spread from Yokohama's foreign settlement to every other part of Japan, another plant species took root in the country. This plant was the turf grass, an indispensable grass variety for parks and sports stadiums. According to records dated around 1874, there is a clear distinction between turf grass on the playing field and turf grass growing on the periphery of the field. Records show that the infield turf grass was imported from the United Kingdom. Many competitive sports are also indebted to the living grass species. The beginnings of sporting turfs in Japan can also be traced back to Yokohama in the late 19th century. Behind the strong overseas sales of Japanese plants from the late 19th to the first half of the 20th century were plant trading companies' promotional and marketing efforts, which included publishing highly detailed catalogs. The active acquisition of overseas plants also enhanced the growth of domestic horticulture and garden design. World expositions held in European and American cities in the 19th century presented an opportunity to introduce Japanese commodities and Japanese horticultural products were enthusiastically showcased. Horticulture had become one of the most important industries that could bring a country's cultural status to an international prominence. And in 1889, the Japanese Horticultural Society was established to raise the standard of horticulture throughout Japan. Yoshimoto Hanabusa, elected as the first chairman, was a bureaucrat who had visited the Paris Expo and later became the third chairman of the Japanese Red Cross Society. The vice chairman were naturalist and horticulturalist Yoshio Tanaka and Masana Maeda, a bureaucrat in the Ministry of Agriculture and Commerce. Maeda was the one who proposed and carried out Japan's participation in the Paris Expo. He also advocated for the restoration of commercial rights to reclaim trade dominated by foreign trading houses back to the Japanese. He was also engaged in a project to elevate the quality of regional products by promoting them at expositions and other events. From its inception, the Japanese Horticultural Society 
organized by these individuals promoted horticulture not only as a hobby and academic research, but also for industry and trade. Shigenobu Okuma, who twice served as the Prime Minister of Japan, was a plant aficionado who kept a spacious garden and a greenhouse in his home and served as the second chairman of the Japanese Horticultural Society for 21 years from 1902. The monthly Japanese Horticultural Society journal, first published with the establishment of the Japanese Horticultural Society, is the oldest official journal of a horticultural organization in Asia and is renowned throughout the world. 19世紀後半は日本市民、ジャポニズムが欧米でブームとなった時代です。In the Meiji period, there was a foreign trading house in Yokohama called Lewis Bomer & Company, which was a general plant trading company. The Japanese plant dealer who was in charge of purchasing was Uhei Suzuki. He practiced the trade for seven years and formed a mutual trust relationship with Lewis Bomer. During this period, Uhei Suzuki was assigned about a 860 square meter commercial greenhouse with a boiler by the Bomer Company. In 1890, he founded the Yokohama Gardeners Association a year after leaving Bomer's company. He immediately opened a branch in Oakland, California, USA, and began exporting directly to other countries without relying on foreign trading posts. The Meiji government implemented European and American technologies to modernize transportation, communications, and military equipment. By contrast, domestic industries were mainly agricultural produce, such as tea, silk, and other processed farm products, as well as arts and crafts, resulting in a trade revenue deficit. Eventually, raw silk began to be exported directly to foreign countries, and the momentum for the restoration of commercial rights movement increased as the Japanese sought to regain the profits from trade with foreign merchant houses. As a result, the 1890s saw many conflicts between foreign and Japanese merchants. The Yokohama Gardeners Association was established in the midst of these conflicts but did not encounter any problems. Uhei Suzuki took Bomer Nursery's American clients and established a direct export business. And from the beginning, Yokohama Gardeners Association was a competing general plant trading company, which for some reason Bomer tacitly approved. There is an anecdote that when another Japanese merchant went off on his own, Bomer Nursery granted a share of the American orders to this merchant in support of his independent business. Behind this story was a bond that transcended nationality, like-minded businesses that shared the same love of horticulture, a type of beautified tale passed down through the generations. Before establishing the Lewis Bomer & Company, Lewis Bomer was employed by the Hokkaido Development Commission for 10 years to instruct the Japanese in agricultural technologies. He may have had an eye for leadership in watching the growth of the Japanese people. Yokohama Gardeners Association later became Yokohama Nursery Company Limited and is still in business today in this 21st century. One of the catalysts that brought the Japonism movement to Western countries was Japan's active participation in the world expositions. It could be said that this was the branding strategy to enhance the international recognition of Japanese culture. 
the establishment of the Japanese Gardening Society enhanced the international reputation of Japanese horticulture. It served as a gateway for exchanging information with the horticultural communities of Europe and the United States. In addition, we must remember the achievements of international specialists invited from abroad to disseminate their knowledge and skills. In the late 19th century, the Japanese learned and absorbed modern horticultural knowledge and techniques by inviting European and American specialists. Before long, some people went abroad and became engaged in floriculture, making use of the knowledge and skills they had learned while in Japan. Of the Japanese who immigrated to Argentina, many chose to become floriculturists. In 1977, JICA established the Technological Center for Flower, Fruit, and Horticulture in Argentina to support the technical improvement of Japanese Argentine farmers. In December 2004, this facility and its functions were transferred to INTA, Argentina's National Agricultural Technology Institute. Escobar, near Buenos Aires, is known as the City of Flowers because of the thriving Japanese floriculture. A flower festival is held there every year. The Japanese Overseas Migration Museum at JICA Yokohama presents the history of the many people who emigrated from Japan to other countries. We interviewed Mr. Alberto Matsumoto, a second-generation Japanese Argentine born in Escobar and currently living in Yokohama. Escobar is the first place to grow flowers. It is a place to grow flowers. え、ガシュ各細胞といっても日本人ま、ですので、We interviewed Mr. Tetsuya Hirose, a second-generation Japanese Argentine and president of the Escobar Flower Festival Association. La vida de la flor nació con una idea, con una idea del señor Arturo Brosio que era agricultor y socio del Rotary Club de Escobar. Entonces, en una reunión de Rotary, ya que en esa época había muchos cultivadores de flores en Escobar, especialmente en la colectividad japonesa, pensó de hacer una fiesta en homenaje a los floricultores o productores de flores del partido de Escobar. Bueno, la primera fiesta de la flor se hizo con un gran sacrificio porque empezamos de nada y todos los productores apoyaron esta fiesta 
y trabajaban intensamente cada productor para poder armar esa exposición. En esa época también había muchas flores, porque todavía había muchos cultivadores de flores en Nikkei, a su vez con las plantas. We spoke with Margarita Hisaki, a third generation Japanese Argentine who works as a flower farmer in Escobar. Años, eh, la planta y la flor es algo muy usado luego, de, después de la pandemia, es como que la gente se ha inclinado mucho más a tener plantas en sus casas, muchas plantas en los interiores de la casa, eh, flores en el jardín, pero mayormente plantas de hojas verdes grandes en los interiores de la casa. The city of Escobar has a modest but authentic Japanese garden, which opened on October 4th, 1969, and was donated by the local Japanese Argentine community to the Argentinian community as a token of their appreciation. Why were Japanese immigrants well accepted and played such an important role in Argentinian society? いわゆる日本人がある程度成功し始めると、まあどこの国でもそうですが、やっぱりネタみみたいなものが出てくるわけです。それが大きな問題にならないようには、自分たちはマイノリティでありながら社会に貢献すると。で、これはどういうふうに
a leading project of the Creative City projects promoted by the City of Yokohama to revitalize the city by repurposing historical buildings for culture and the arts. Like the fertile soil that nurtures plants, Bank Art is a center for nurturing artists. Kabu, who exhibits here, is an artist who works with plants as her subjects. She was dispatched to Jamaica as a JICA Overseas Cooperation Volunteer from 2018 to 2020 to teach children about plants and art at a local school. There, she met a reggae musician who came from Yokohama to learn Jamaican music. Let me introduce my friend, Ryukun. Hi, my name is Kon Ryu. I was going to Edna Manley College, Kingston, Jamaica. Then I met her. I'm a reggae musician based in Yokohama, Japan. Ryu wrote the lyrics and composed the original theme song for this program. Now we ask Kabu to present her artwork, which will be exhibited at Bank Art. えっと、Kabu and Ryu, who both left Yokohama and met in Jamaica, are now expanding a new network of exchanges back in Yokohama. Like a bed of flowers attracting butterflies, Yokohama has become a city that attracts various kinds of artists. Yokohama's history as a center of global plant exchange has created a lush green landscape for people to gather. And this has become the foundation of today's Yokohama, a city that fosters a diversity of art and music. Cultural enlightenment of flora and greenery began at the turn of the 19th century when Japan opened its doors to the rest of the world. The sown seeds have taken root in each region of the world and are blooming in a variety of colors. Once the center of the plant trade, today a city of blooming culture, Yokohama will host the International Horticultural Exposition in 2027. The exposition's theme is the scenery of the future for happiness. The cultural exchanges of flowers and greenery staged in Yokohama will lead to a greater evolution of the city. How would the future be like?花によって一つの産業を小さな町でま成長させることができた。今後未来を語るのであれば、花一つでも大きな話題が作れることであり、社会に貢献ができるのではないかと思います。屋上とかですね、人工地盤だったりそのよくあの高架のプロムナードとか
revitalization and development through culture, art, and international exchange will be the pivotal factor for a sustainable society of the future. Yokohama has historically harbored the soil for such development, and the International Horticultural Expo 2027 will be rooted in this historical foundation, proposing a new type of international exposition for the forthcoming era.